Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. And today I'd like to take a look at a very small little card game that is beginning to grow in version into uh, something of a bigger card game with all of the expansions that it's getting. But that game is Star Realms. Now, I have a little bit of a personal history with this game because when I was first introduced to the game, it was two years ago at Origins, and uh, I played it and I immediately went to their booth and bought a copy, not only a copy of the game, but also one of their play mats as well that you'll be seeing a little bit later. And then a dastardly character chose to steal my copy of Star Realms and my play mat. Star Realms, however, um, I went and replaced it uh, with the help of a friend of mine, Tom, and I have loved it ever since. We'll talk more about that later. Let's look at gameplay, shall we? Okay, Star Realms, in its base form, is a two-player card game. Um, it is a deck-building game, much like, uh, as far as mechanically speaking, uh, Dominion or Thunderstone, that type of thing, where you are uh, going to be using your deck of cards, your initial set of deck of cards, uh, to purchase new cards to be added to that deck to be used at a later time when you draw them up into your hand. It is a very light game. Uh, it is a very uh, solid two-player game. I'll talk more about that later. But gameplay, gameplay starts off like this. First of all, in setting up the board, you have to take the Explorer cards and place them in a, car, in, in a stack all of their own. You shuffle the, the, the deck of cards and lay five out face up. This becomes uh, the trade row where you can purchase new cards using the cards that will come up from your hand. And you'll see that they have the different costs up here in the upper left hand, uh, right hand corner of the cards. And then down here in the bottom of the cards, they have the different abilities that they will afford to your fleet during a battle. Ra you randomly determine uh, which player goes first. And that first person takes and draws three cards. <coughs> and that, begin that becomes their starting hand. Now, you would also... The, the base game also comes with a set of authority cards, which is simply uh, cards that have the authority symbol on them, which I threw away, <laughs> to be honest with you, because I did not, that is the one thing that I did not like about the game, that we had to manipulate these, this deck of point cards. Uh, it just slowed the game down, and so I downloaded a life counter app from the Play Store, and I use that on my phone now to keep track of authority. And the whole point of the game is to whittle down your opponent's uh, fleet power so that they uh, have no power left and you have thus defeated them. Now, as we begin the game, the first person draws three cards. There is an advantage to going first, you get to buy first, you get to attack first. So to balance that advantage out a little bit, you can only draw three cards. The second player will be able to draw five, and then when it comes back to the first player's turn, they will be able to draw up to five. But their first turn, they can only draw three cards. And there's no cost to play a card, and then that card, those cards give you an ability. This means that you have purchasing power. So since we only had scouts come up, we have three dollars which with, with which to purchase a card from the trade row and you can purchase them the same way that you would take cards in uh, Ticket to Ride or something to that effect, where I can take a card, for example, I'll take a Corvette for two, and then it replenishes, and then I still have one more dollar to spend, so I'll take a Trade Bot as well, and then these all go into my discard pile, that is replaced, and that's the end of my turn. I only had purchasing power. If I had combat power, I would be able to attack my opponent at that point, but I did not have any. So I just purchased cards. Now my turn is over. Player two then takes one, two, three, four, five cards as their starting hand, flips them over. And look at that. Holy no shuffling, Batman. Anyway, now I have $5 with which to purchase cards. Uh, and so I will go ahead and take the Imperial Frigate, frigate for three. Arr, should have taken the two first. 
Um, and for the other two, I will take this one. These all go into my discard pile. That comes back. And now it's the other person's turn. With player two having done their first turn, we come back to player one. One, two, three, four, five. And we play these cards. And I really did not shuffle these. Goodness gracious. Uh, now I have five purchasing power. Um, I'm definitely going to take this base. Bases are important because it gives shield or the outposts give defense to your authority. So in, before uh, attacking my authority, um, my opponent would have to take out this base first by, by causing four damage in one turn. Uh, so uh, outposts are very important. So I'm going to purchase one of those for three. And then I've got two left. Well, let's go ahead and turn this over first. Trade pod that has three. I'm going to go ahead and take the cutter because this also allows me to heal for authority. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one. And then all these come into my draw pile. I'm sorry, my discard pile. That's flipped over. And that ends my second turn. Draw five cards. And we place them face down. I'm sorry, not face down. We place them face up here. So now I have three purchasing power and two combat power. So I have three purchasing power. Um, we're just going to go ahead and go with the Embassy Yacht for three. And that's all I can purchase. Then I also have two um, combat power, which I will strike my opponent's authority, knocking them from 50 down to 48. All of these get placed into my draw pile. And normally what I would do is I would go ahead and shuffle and get my five cards ready for my next turn. One, two, three, four, five. All right, but I cannot turn them over yet. And we come back to player one's third turn. He draws cards. He only has two. So now he has to shuffle the cards that he has in his discard pile and continue drawing up to five. So there's three more. And we go ahead and turn them over. All right, so now we have that cutter that we just purchased. It came up. So it's going to give us two spending power. It's also going to heal four of our authority. That happens automatically. So I'm going from 48 up to 52. You can go over the original 50. Uh, that's one of the cool things I like about the game, actually. So now we're at 52 authority to their 50. And I also have two, three, four purchasing power. Uh, we forgot to do this, so let's go ahead and do that. So I have four purchasing power. Um, the Stealth Needle copies any other ship you've played this turn. And the Stealth Needle has that ship's faction in addition to Machine Cult. So not only can it ally with Machine Cults, if it uh, copies another faction's uh, ship, then it also has that ally ability as well. Um, You'll look at the cutter here. The cutter has an ally ability. If I were to have another Trade Federation ship out on my tableau during the current turn, the, the cutter ship would also cause four extra damage of, of uh, combat power. So, But I don't have another Trade Federation ship out there, so it, it doesn't do that ability. But it does carry out the two other abilities. So with my four purchasing power, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Get that Stealth Needle for four. And then with my two combat, I'm going to strike at my opponent's authority, causing him two damage. So he is now down to 48. So it is now I have 52 and they have 48. And now that I am down to 48 to my opponent's 52, I take those five cards that I drew and lay them face down. Okay, so now I have the Embassy Yacht that allows me to heal three authority, which takes me up to 51. So now it's 51 to 52. And then it also gives me two spending power to be added to the three that I already have. And then also, if I have two or more bases in play, I get to draw two more cards. I don't have two other bases in play, so that doesn't actually take effect. So I have two, three, four, five purchasing power. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and purchase this this uh, base. Now the base 
uh, as you can see, has a silver shield in the bottom, not a black shield like that outpost did that I showed you earlier. People who are attacking my authority can divert away from this. They do not have to cause this damage. However, I'm, I'm sorry, before attacking my authority. However, notice that the blob, the hive, which is a blob base, gives me a latent, uh, always going to be giving me three combat power. So there is an incentive to knock this out first before an authority, uh, before attacking authority. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it into my, uh, my hand. Additionally, it has an ally ability of drawing a card. So that would be a sixth card I would be able to play during my action. So I'm gonna go ahead and purchase this for five, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to hit my opponent for one, which takes them down to 51. So now it's 51 to 51. And that's the end of my turn. And in that fashion, we would continue until one person's authority got down to zero. And I, uh, as you can already imagine, we actually have more authority now than we did when we started the game. And you'll find that that happens frequently. However, you'll also find that once combos begin to take effect, once those ally effects begin to start comboing with each other, uh, you can score 20, 30 uh, points of damage in one turn. Uh, of course, that is a very good turn, but it can happen. So don't think that this is a long drawn out game. This is a very quick two player game. Uh, you can probably get a game in in less than 20 minutes, uh, probably closer to 15 minutes, depending on the level of experience of the players. Before we talked about uh, how I feel about the game, I did want to go over some of the different uh, abilities that some of the cards have just to kind of explain how it works. For example, this, this Dreadnought here causes seven combat damage uh, always, and it always gives you the ability to draw a card but at the end of your turn, you can scrap it to cause an extra five damage. So if you're in somewhat of a desperate situation or maybe you're about to knock your opponent out and that extra five will finish the job, then maybe you wanna go ahead and, and scrap this card and do that extra 12 damage. Uh, I already talked about the, the allying. So this blob fighter here, allows you to do three damage, but it also, if you have another blob ship out on the on your tableau at this at currently, it allows you to also draw another card. The Federation Shuttle, um, again, it causes um, you to have two extra buying power, but if you have another Federation Trade Federation ship on, the, on your tableau, you also get to heal four damage. And some cards will allow you to have a number of different things. But just remember that ally cards, uh, only if you have another kind of that ship on the board do you get to do this. And only if you scrap the card do you get to do this. This top line, however, is something that you're always able to do. Some outposts will uh, give you a choice for their latent ability. For example, the defense center here, which is a Trade Federation base, lets you choose between either healing three authority or causing two damage. And you would simply have to choose one or the other. If you do one, you cannot do the other. Well, let me tell you, Star Realms is one of those games that simply took me by surprise. And that's the best way I can say it because I was not expecting anything out of this game. Hadn't even heard of the game before Origins uh, 2014. So when I played it, I was like, dude, this is really fast, it's really fun, it has the space theme that I enjoy tremendously already. What may, what's, what's better is that it is fast, and I know that sounds a little strange coming from me because I do enjoy the longer combat-driven combat games, but this is a filler game that I can seriously enjoy and sink my teeth into. The theme is definitely there, the artwork is phenomenal. This is one of the games that I keep around, not just because I like it, but my daughter likes it and my sons like it as well. Uh, and my wife enjoys it too, although she doesn't play it as much as my, my uh, children do. Uh, this is one of the games in my collection that um, my kids will come in here and grab and just begin playing. Siblings usually don't do that kind of thing. Um, they're usually at each other's throat. Star Realms 
knocks that barrier in out of the park. So um, that's one of the reasons I have kept with Star Realms, and and I am totally happy that my kids enjoy playing Star Realms so much. So Star Realms from me gets a huge two thumbs up for a number of different reasons, not the least of which is simplicity of play, uh, beauty of the card, uh, well implementing the, the theme, um, and just outright fun factor. So that's Star Realm from yours truly, Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.